Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha and today we are going to discuss how to write an abstract. So let's start. Before getting an idea of how to write an abstract, it is necessary to know what is an abstract. So abstract is basically a gist or essence of your research. That research could be your dissertation, your thesis, your article, your research paper, anything. And that particular abstract is basically an essence. Essence means that should be so much impactful that a reader will take an interest to read furthermore. But it also contains all the detailed information related to your research, your analysis, your arguments of your complete research, but in a very concise and a concrete way. So, it also helps the reader to remember the key points from your research. Now, the second most important thing is when to write an abstract. Usually people have a perception that abstract should be written initially. It is helpful also so that whatever is your idea that should be concreted in a, uh, in a precise manner that what you want to write down. But that should be for yourself. It should not be published at that particular stage. Because once you write, start writing a research work, it may be of any form, as I said earlier, then you get an ideas related to your heading, subheading, sub-subheading, and many other things. So your paper increases, and you might be having so much of things that uh, it can be added further in your abstract. So basically, no matter it is necessary for any conferences or maybe in many research papers that you have to first submit an abstract and thereafter you have to submit the full paper. But it is uh, suggested that you must write first research paper or an article and then write abstract so that it should cover all the important things which you are mentioning in your research paper. So that's why, as I said, that even though it is a first section of your paper, but abstract should be written at the end because it summarizes the contents of your entire research. Thereafter, you must take very important sentence or a key points which you have included in your research in every section and then arrange that all section in a sequence and then sum up your idea then it will be easy for you also to relate everything of your research work in the abstract. Similarly, it will be easy for any reader to understand what are the contents of your research paper. Then thirdly, write uh, the helping or connected points or word to make a flow which should be very clear, very smooth and comprehensive. Thereafter, before submitting your final research work or a manuscript, always cross-check whether the information in the abstract entirely agrees and what you have written in the research paper. Because sometimes it happens that you have written something else in your abstract and your research paper is so extensive because now at that point you have done a very extensive research. So it might change uh, the main content or focus of your research. That's why you have to recheck your abstract and rewrite your abstract at the end of your manuscript. Then always remember that your abstract must be related to your topic. That means whatever topic you have selected, it should justify your abstract. Then it should be um, either of 150 or 200 or 250, 300 or 500 words. So basically between 150 to 500 words, depending upon the conference proceeding, depending upon the conference, about the research paper of that particular organization and their demand or their policy, that uh, what type of word count should be an abstract must include. So you have to be very precise and very concise yet very concrete in writing an abstract. So the next important thing is what should be included in then 
abstract. So first thing is, as I said earlier also, your topic must be very powerful and so as your abstract. That means your abstract must reflect the idea of your topic in a very clear manner throughout, not only in a abstract, but also in your research paper also. So you have to be very particular whenever you're choosing or selecting any topic, heading or title. Second thing is all the background information about your research must be placed properly in a very initial manner. What is your research all about? That should be placed in a very first paragraph. Then what is the objective of your study? and research problem. It could be objectives or it could be research problems, but that has to be placed in the second, uh, second step, but in a very precise manner. Then what is the research methodology? Research methodology is very, very important, whether it is doctrinal or non-doctrinal or which type of research methodology you're using, that must be mentioned in your abstract only. Then what are the uh, findings, then what are the key results, then what are the arguments related to your particular objective or your research. That should also be added in the abstract. And lastly, what is the significance or implication of your research? That means how your research is so important or what is the thing, what is the points or uh, criteria or thing which you have researched, which has not been done earlier. What is your perception about that particular topic or, or that particular area? That has to be stated in a wonderful manner. And then lastly, conclusion. That is all that must also be added in your abstract only. But all these things must be added in a very, very concise way. Now the next segment is really very important because no matter you might be having an information or idea that what should be included in the abstract, but it is equally important to know what should not be included in an abstract. So the first thing is your topic or your abstract must not contain very lengthy information about the background of your topic. That means there must not be any repetitive information about your topic. It should be written in one or two sentences, maximum on three sentences. That's it. Similarly, you should avoid using adverbs, adjectives, or redundant phrases. Then there must not be use of any acronyms or abbreviation like this in your sentences or any incomplete sentence in abstract there may be use of any judgment. So do not use any judgment in your abstract. Then your abstract must reflect your research work. That is why the reference of other literature must, not, must be avoided. That means your research work, what is your research, must be highlighted in the abstract, not the research work of another one. That could be used as a reference, as a citation, but it should not be used as a main thing in your research. So your content, your research should be included, but the reference or citation of others should not be included in your abstract. Then never use any jargons or, con or any other terms which confuse other. You should be very, very particular in the selection of the words then do not give any citation, any footnotes or any references in the abstract. Then you should avoid any sort of image, any illustration, figures, tables or any references to them. So that's all about how to write an abstract. I think you understand the whole thing. And if you want a detailed note, you can go to visit to my website that is localiq.com. And you may also follow us on various social media platforms. We are having a page on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook page and a LinkedIn page also. So I hope you like the video and for the next video. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.